All right, so this is Steven Chin for Night Hacking at J Focus, and I have with me Axel Fontaine. Did I say your name right? Yeah, correct. Pleased <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you. And what are you going to show us today? Well, I think we're going to have a bit of a chat about uh, continuous delivery, zero downtime, and if, um, if the Wi-Fi plays along, we might do some, some deployment, some packaging of instances as VMs and deploying them live on the cloud later. Cool. Sounds awesome. So do you, do you ascribe to the uh, DevOps philosophy? Ah, it depends. <laughs> it depends. I think for me, DevOps is a bit of a, um, it's a, bit of a faster horse, to be honest with you. I think, um, I think the DevOps, as we see today with a lot of uh, Puppet and Chef to automatically configure instances, is, um, is something that's just kind of speeding up the, um, the thing that a sysadmin has traditionally been doing, so he's, uh, part of the job of a sysadmin to have a reproducible environment is to have machine A as identical as possible as machine B. And so he's uh, making sure the patches and everything is all up there and, and it's yeah. all synchronized between all your environments. And this is basically just kind of automating and accelerating that, but it's not really fundamentally rethinking it the way we probably should be doing it in this day and age. Got it. So it's automating what the sysadmins have been doing, whereas you're going to show us continuous delivery, continuous integration. What are we doing? Continuous delivery. Yeah, continuous delivery. We're going to okay. Where we're yeah. going to actually show you how you can change your Java product to be more reactive in terms of how often you're releasing and going through your whole life cycle. Um, I'm not sure if we'll do that in the demo today, but we'll take a Java product and we'll show how we can do the last leg and get it out there. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So you want me to show your screen? Sure, we can we'll do that. See, we'll see what we can get working with the Wi-Fi at the venue here. Sure. OK, so I've got a small uh, sample application here. It's just a very small Hello World to make it easy. So um, this is just um, one of the pages. It's the, it's the main page in the app. So we're, uh, uh, we're just going to customize it a bit just to, uh, just to make sure to show that we're live. So just going to save that. And um, I've got a very small project here. So it's just... Um, it's just some uh, some war file we're going to build some small some small Java app. So just running a standard Maven build on that. So that's so exactly what Mateus told us. Don't do this on the conference Wi-Fi. I know. I know. So he'll probably be okay with us. And we're hold on. Just gonna run it without the tests here for this this little demo. Okay. So the, that's still the part that's fine. That's on my laptop. It's not too stupid yet. The really stupid part is going to come in a couple of seconds. So first, so we've got a war file now. If we, uh, if we have a look in our target folder, we've got a brand new war file there. Yep. And we're going to fire it up locally first to see how, how that would be. So we're going to turn this war file into a machine into a, that we can then run on a hypervisor. To do that, I'm using a tool that, that it isn't on the market yet. It's not released yet, but it, uh, it'll come in the next couple of months. Um, the code name for the tool is Photon, but uh, that'll change as well. So here we go. We, we just kind of point it at the wall file and do a Photon app. And so what it's doing now is it's basically looking for the dependencies that are necessary to run this wall file on hardware. So what kind of dependencies does the wall file have? Um, it has a Tomcat dependency, a JDK, or mm -hmm. a GRE dependency. It's got a, a, the GRE depends on the C library. The C library depends on the OS kernel. So we fused all that together. So we had our image here in about uh, nine and a half seconds that was assembled. It's a four-year-old laptop, so it's a bit slow. And, uh, and we've launched the instance on VMware now. So we've got a, a local, um, local instance here. So that's the IP we, we got up and running out. Took about 10 seconds to, to get that up. So that's a, that's a full machine we've got there. So we're going to. So is that a clean instance that you're running that, that, on? That's a, that's a clean instance. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it didn't exist before. Now it's, uh, it's booted on, uh, on the virtual hardware there. Cool. So, so we've got it up and running. Uh, hello, Night Hacking. That's our little test page we've got here. So we, um, we can also um, look at the console to, to see uh, so to prove you that we've actually booted something, uh, something there. So we can just, um, just look at the console here. And uh, we're just going to point it, make sure it's the right payload. So it's going to find the first instance for that payload. And that's just basically the Linux boot process and whatever we saw there. So it, it eventually booted and started our Tomcat and, and had all that. So that's yep. all. And there's your app server running. Yeah, absolutely. Up and there in the, in the machine, we can scroll up a bit. You can see it's all the Linux kernel booting. So that's all fresh from that instance that didn't exist a minute ago. 
And now we're going to take, uh, now we'll start the stupid part where we take this bad boy up to the cloud. So we're, we're going um, to, we're going to get it up and running on EC2. This is really stupid, huh? but uh, that's uh, <laughs> no risk, no fun, living on the edge. That's, uh, that's what we're here for. So we're just going to switch the hypervisor. It's just a flag. So we're just going to switch it to EC2 and uh, going to fire it up. Yeah. Three, yeah. two, one. Off All we right, go. So this is where everyone turn off your cell phones. Yeah. Give us a little bandwidth. <laughs> so we've... Um, Let's look at connected. Yeah. yeah. So here we are. So, so we've reused the same machine image. It's, it's unchanged. And we're taking that same image and uploading it. So, it, so it's up already on S3. And uh, we're creating an instance. Uh, so we've created a security group that opens up the ports necessary for it. So it just opens up port 80, nothing else. And now uh, we're waiting for the Amazon infrastructure to launch the image. So that, that usually takes somewhere uh, between 30 and 45 seconds. So, so unfortunately, we've got to wait for these guys. They're probably rewiring stuff. So OK, so we, <laughs> our instance is up already. And now we're waiting for the payload to boot on EC2. So, um, so that should take a couple of seconds. That's basically just uh, the actual spinning up of the instance. So we're up. And, um, and we're going to have a quick look at that in the browser. Here we are. Copy paste this bad boy here. Get in there. And here we are. We're wow. up on EC2 in under a minute. Brand new image, That's unchanged from local to the cloud. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Think so too. The site, you know, this this cycle. Usually, deployment takes you longer than your test cycle, but this looks like it might actually be faster than most people's test cycles. The point here is that you really enter a new way of thinking where you're not logging into some kind of instance and then SSHing and customizing. That's all gone. You enter a world where an instance is disposable. Mm -hmm. So you, you create the image, you fire it up. If it's not what you want, you just discard it, wait five seconds, you have a new one. And so it's very easy to integrate this as part of your build process, where uh, you can just create entire machines as part of your build process, and you fire your integration tests against them. And if they're successful, take the image to the cloud. So how do you think this is going to change the way people um, go through their development process? Well, I think um, it's going to clean up the interface between development and operations. I think right now there's a lot of uncertainty because the platform you develop on is a different platform than you actually run your software yeah. on. So um, the development thinks everything's fine. The operations try to get it up and running. It doesn't work. Finger pointing back and forth. That's all gone with this because you, you can deliver a clean image and either it works or it doesn't work. End of story. So are the, are the operation guys scared of you? Well, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I would say it will seems, free. It seems like there's a certain amount of um, potential for folks to be worried about their future employment. I think it depends the way, uh, the way you look at it, because it will free up time for more interesting work than just doing uh, uh, the, gr the grunt work. You can start planning your infrastructure at a higher level of abstraction and dealing with that. So I think that's going to be very interesting. And I think it also makes life easier um, for accepting the deliverables from development, because you can have a very clear operations handbook where it's basically, this is the image, these are the three or four parameters, you get a set, either it's working or it isn't. Yeah, yeah, no, it sounds like it definitely simplifies things and mm -hmm. lets you do end-to-end -end deployment from the Java development yeah. side rather than Absolutely. having different environments you're deploying to mm -hmm. on production. And so one of, one of the interesting aspects about this we, we haven't really um, talked about yet. Huh? If, I, if I now list the images that, I, that I've got here, I'm going to have a quick look at that. So I'm just going to list the images. And so you see I've got an image here. And this is the total size. And that's kilobytes. So we're, mm -hmm. we're at under 40 megs for a, for a whole machine running there. So it's really changing the game a bit. Because if you, if you look at the machines we have today, you've got five gigabytes of stuff. To, to run a very small payload that's going to solve your business problem. And you've got all kinds of technical ceremony next to it that doesn't really serve the business. And now you're down to just the code. So this is just pulling in exactly what you need as dependencies based upon your Correct. project. Correct. Um, are there advantages in um, performance or startup time or? Well, I think the startup time, you've that, seen that it. That was I, pretty fast. Yeah. You, get, you get pretty much everything out of the way. So there is, uh, so there, there's nothing that can interfere with that. For 
performs is the same argument. Then you don't have any background process that might sabotage you. You have a clean sandbox as part of your VM, so you're well isolated. And, yeah. um, and because it runs on, the, on standard hypervisors, you don't, you don't have to set anything up or any intermediate layers to make sure it would work. Cool. No, that's, that's <coughs> definitely simplifies a lot of what people spend a lot of time on doing deployment for their projects. That's my, that's my hope as well. I, I, uh, every customer I see runs into the same problems. It's always too complicated. It, it's too error prone. And I think it's time to radically simplify all that. So, so right now, you, you mentioned it's called Photon, but it's going to be something different when it gets released? Yeah, it's going, it's going to be called <laughs> BoxFuse when it gets released. Nice. Pure uh, SEO uh, uh, story, because Photon is just a poor name for that. It did the job <laughs> as a... As a code name, but, but that's it. So that, that's coming. So what, what other features do you have in the pipeline for the release? Well, I think uh, for, the, for the release, we, we've got a couple of things uh, in there already that are quite interesting. So with a flag, you can generate the machine in debug mode. And so you can connect a remote debugger to it. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a development mode, so you can NFS mount the output directory of your IDE. And as you make changes, they get uploaded into the machine and reloaded on the fly. So that basically, you end up reducing the number of environments you have of, uh, of development, test production, and everything down to one. And then you have this one environment you can then test everything against on your local machine already. So you run with the same kernel, with the same JDK, with the same everything you're going to have in production later. So there are no surprises. You bring the, um, the pain forward, you find out about it immediately. And then once you're happy with development, you cut the NFS link, regenerate in production mode, and off you go. OK. Yeah, no, that sounds like it would definitely simplify. Mm -hmm. So what, what about, um, do you have any plans for the future roadmap for where BoxFuse is going? Well, I'm, um, I would say that right now the focus is getting 1.0 one, one oh out of the door and, um, and, uh, and sorting that out. And I think I've, I have lots of ideas for the future, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready to talk about them yet. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. You see, so at Oracle, we never chat about future stuff. <laughs> so asking you to do it's a very unfair yeah. question. Yeah, I called Larry. He said, no, don't do it. Don't do it. So. <laughs> cool. That sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for the interview about no. box views and how you do continuous delivery. My pleasure. There is um, there's a, um, a waiting list if you'd like for the launch at, uh, at getphotone.com. It's still the code name, so the rebranding still has to, uh, to take place. But uh, if people are interested, sure, sign up, and I'll let you know once we go live. Cool. All right. Thanks, Axel. Cheers. Thank you very much, Stephen. <laughs>